we go back to Lord Alfred Hayes and what is he doing? He's fondling Susan White. This is not an embellishment either. He is literally kissing her on the cheek. Never knew he could turn into such a weird and creepy man. I know when they told him to do this, he went a little step further than expected. He definitely went into business for himself. Yeah. Just grab her and make her feel uncomfortable like she might get sexually assaulted on live TV. At this rate, it looks like he's praying for herpes. The WWF Championship is on the line as Rowdy Roddy Piper is here at the Wrestling Classic and he's led to the ring by a crew of bagpipers in his trademark form. It's pretty sad. This is the second time so far where we've had a wrestler death, but we don't get a promo from the dead guy. I wish they would have inserted Roddy's interview along the way and talk about what he's going to do to Hogan. Hogan did it, but Hogan did it for every other match. Sad of all the guys not to get mic time. It's Roddy Piper. We go to the back where Gene is with Hogan, who is wearing all white, probably because he's racist. Yet his shirt claims he's American, but yet has that old belt, that pre-eagle belt, which is really an ugly piece of shit. This one is really an ugly piece of shit. This one is really small looking. You ought to call it the pussy belt. During the promo, Hulk says Roddy is so dangerous and all he had to do was sit back and watch this elimination tournament and he's ready for Piper. That's all it took. Apparently that is all the momentum he needed and we're off. Back to the ring. Hulk Hogan puts his title on the line in a rare one on one encounter with the hot rod Roddy Piper. Hogan and Piper are about to have a colossal tussle for the belt. They take to the floor right away as they are pulling all the stops. With heavy rights, Piper gets thrown over the rail back into the ring. This isn't going to be much of a wrestling match, but a street fight. As is Piper's signature, he gives a rake of the way and Piper answers with a hit to the throat. Piper continues to go for the throat because he's dirty. Hogan reverses an Irish whip and clotheslines Piper in the corner. Those elbows that he drops, he is moving fast. Hogan is running. He is running more than he's run in the last 20 years. And before he drops the elbow, a clean back suplex by the Hulkster. Certainly textbook stuff, and a deep body slam, and an elbow, and a few punches land Roddy Piper hard into the mat. Piper on the ropes just nails him and then jumps to get some air time. He then goes off the middle rope into a big bear hug by Hogan, but he has to use a double thumb to the eye to break the bear hug and sells his back huge to Piper. A sleeper applied by Roddy Piper and he jumps up on Hogan's back to really sink it in deep to the mat they go. Hogan's arm goes up twice, but does not hit the mat three times. Finger begins to wag as the Hulkster is still alive here. Piper grabs a headlock, but is shoved into the post. A drink goes flying as they try to nail Piper. The Chicago faithful try to nail Piper with a cup or two and punches Hogan. Hogan gives the hoof and is not phased by the shots of the hot rod. They try to scramble into the ring and Hogan punches back in. Then there is kind of a clumsy Irish whip sequence where Hogan gets the boot up. Piper won't go down because he knows Hogan will shoot on him and go for the leg and get the pin. He doesn't want to put himself in a compromising position. Piper doesn't know about Hogan's big boot and leg drop. He figures he is going to do what he needs to do, and I will ignore what you do. Hogan gets the boot up and snatches him up after Piper doesn't fall after he hits the atomic drop yet gets the arrow hook reversed. Piper sidesteps into an ax handle and Hogan goes into the ref. Piper then immediately takes advantage of the fact the ref is incapacitated and grabs a steel chair that's yellow in color from ringside and slams Hogan in the back with it, tries to dig one in when he's on the mat. Hogan catches it coming down from his back and then springs up to vertical base and kicks Piper while they're struggling over the chair. Somehow the chair gets stuck in Hogan's hand. It's the weirdest thing. Even I mentioned that it's all tangled in Hogan's arm. At this point, Bob Orton hits the ring 
and with the cast begins nailing Hulk Hogan, and that's it. That's your Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper finish at the Wrestling Classic. In seven minutes, due to disqualification, Hulk Hogan retains the World Heavyweight Championship over Roddy Piper. This is before the era where DQ finishes would get fans completely turned off. And they could deal with it. You could deal with your guy winning as long as they won. Something cool happened after the DQ. It just meant more ass kicking. Then Hogan and Orndorff do a quick pose routine together with the dub over real American music. It was okay with a lame ending that didn't surprise me just because if you watched Piper matches, you knew how they would end if he was on the losing end. The DQ finish wasn't a surprise since Piper refused to get pinned in matches. I don't think he got pinned in a WWF ring until 1992 against Bret Hart. And I'm not sure why Piper was like that, but he was. Anyway, Bob Orton was a longtime Piper Alley, so they often had that kind of finish with Orton getting involved and Hogan leaving with the title in his hands.